Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Roof, who is in San Diego down the road from me today. How are you doing, Dick? Well, good day indeed. Excellent. And, and uh, Richard is part of, the, of Level 5 Selling. And I don't know if you want to just tell us a little bit about what Level 5 Selling is, because we're going to talk today about sales training for a transformational market. So what, what's Level 5 Selling? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, we, we started about two years ago. Uh, uh, John Hoskins, who's my partner, uh, wrote a book called Level 5 Selling. And John and I happened to bump into each other at Starbucks. And uh, he said, gee, you know, I'd really like to, to you know, take the book, but, but start a company and design a, you know, a new training methodology that's really responsive to you know, the kind of demands we see in the 21st market. But you know, do that all by myself, you know, I'm struggling with that a little bit. And I said, well, love to come to the party. Uh, so that day, we decided to form the partnership, and, and the whole idea, John, behind it was was to, was to say that if, that if you really looked at what's occurring, you know, things don't look like yesterday. Yeah. And and, and yet, you know, the training establishment of which we were a part, we're doing things pretty much like we were doing them for a long time. And, you know, we might be doing them better, but, but we weren't doing them differently. So what? Yeah. What we set out to do was to really try to, to develop, you know, a, a set of, of training content and training methodologies that, that were responsive to the demands of the 21st century market. Yeah. Um, and for those, it's, been great, it's been great fun. It's been yeah, great fun. And for those of you not familiar with, with Dick's work is, um, you know, now he's with Level 5 Selling, looking at um, training for the 21st century and for a transformation market. Um, I guess 30, 40 years ago now, you did the same thing when you were working with Neil Rackham and Spin Selling, and that was the last big kind of move in, the, in, in, sales, in sales training and sales performance improvement. So you're, you're two different centuries, two different, uh, two different initiatives. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, that's, but, it, but, but, but it's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. I, I think what, what, what we were doing way back when mm -hmm. uh, was very much at that point uh, different. Yeah, uh, it was different, and uh, and I think it's probably time to uh, sort of revisit that challenge. Yeah. So tell me, tell me, Dick, why is I mean, sales training has you know it's obviously it's something that you know people look at all the time, talk about all the time, um, and it often happens as a maybe the you know maybe an annual initiative. Oh, let's do sales training, and maybe you know grab somebody in, do a few workshops, and then yeah. Dick, tick that box but there's but um, nothing really is embedded or changed but how has the landscape changed in the in the way that maybe sales you know traditional sales training doesn't meet the needs anymore of the modern seller well I, and i think that that was the very bit, that's where we started john mm -hmm. you know uh, when we sat down and said okay if we really want to be serious about doing something different we need to first of all go back and take a look at, at, the, at the scale and the scope of the changes that are occurring in the market, Be, because they really are transformational. Mm -hmm. and, and, and buyers are, are buying differently, therefore sellers need to be doing something different. And, 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 and us as in the world of training need to try to be responsive to that. So what does that look like? Well, a, a couple of things really jumped off, uh, off the table. The, the, the first one was that, that we need to stop looking at training as an event mm -hmm. and, and look at it as an ongoing process. I mean, we've seen it a thousand times, everyone in the field has, you know, you got a 300 person sales force, you know, a company goes out and hires vendors like us, you know, we do nine meetings scattered across the United States and we parachute in for a couple of days and bring one of our expert trainers and it's done in a really nice hotel and, and the two days go, you know, pretty well, and that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. And everybody leaves saying, "Yeah, well, that was, you know, a pretty good time. The food was good." Uh, you know, that that just won't work. The, 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 and the reason that it won't work is because the scale and the scope of the changes that have occurred means that the salespeople today really genuinely have to be doing some things differently, and those things aren't so easy. Mm -hmm. So we really think that 
the, the training must move to, to being an ongoing process. That means folks like us, when we initiate an engagement with a, with a client now, John, we don't do it in terms of a program. We do it in terms of a project. Yeah, yeah. We set up 180 days and a whole, whole thing is to, is to establish a foundation to have a continuing learning process going on, to provide people with the materials, uh, the, the wherewithal to make learning ongoing. And, and I think the key to that is the frontline managers. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, as we've always known, um, you know, Dick, one of the biggest issues is that, as you say, with the workshop model, it's great and everybody's excited and they go away. But if the manager isn't there to reinforce it after you leave, it kind of dies on the vine. And the, and the managers aren't going to reinforce it if they don't feel that they know it well enough themselves. They're not going to embarrass themselves in front of their salespeople because trying to reinforce something that they're not expert in. The, no question. I mean, and that, that again is sort of the, the second factor that uh, John and I kicked around that in addition to be so ongoing versus being an event, the frontline managers have to take center stage. So during that 180 days, we train them first mm -hmm. and then we train them to, to work, with the salespeople. And, and the real key is to make coaching a must do. I, I can't tell you the number of projects that, that I've no question done myself in the past where, you know, we suggested the company, now you guys, you know, you, you got to get the managers coaching and everyone nodded their head, yeah, yeah. but it didn't happen. And so what, what we're doing is saying, that's not a nice to do. That's a must do or what's gonna happen is whatever you learned in quote a program will be gone within 60 days after the program is over. So the man, so our whole thing is actually um, a coaching system more than it is a training system. Right, so, so explain that a little more because I do think, and I've had this conversation with a number of people and I do think yeah. that, pe that most people do not really understand what coaching looks like in a professional business sense, right? And especially, and that goes triple for, for sales coaching, because most people think of coaching, or when you mention, if you say to somebody, you need to start coaching your people, they tend to just fall back on whatever frame of reference they have from sports or from you know, when, they were, when they were in high school. Oh yeah, well, you know, the coach just used to tell us what to do. And then if they told us, you know, tell us 20 times and then eventually we would do it and everything would be good. So then they go out and start telling people what to do, which, you know, doesn't really, doesn't really work with adults that well. So can you explain what does, what is, what does coaching really mean? What is coaching? And particularly what is coaching in a sales management sense? You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. First of all, it, you really have to stand back to the point that you just made. You know, it is not about, telling people about something they need to do. It's about helping them learn something they need to do. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get off of this telling thing and get on to the idea that, that you're genuinely trying to help somebody learn something. And, and the biggest operational barrier to that is the managers just run out of time. Mm -hmm. The frontline manager has got so many things going on that Coaching gets put off till Friday, and then it never happens. Right. And, and you can say, well, we're going to change that. But, but, but I've tried it, and, and sooner or later, it, the gravity just drags it back because there are so many demands. The reward system is set up for closing that deal, not for, not for coaching. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did is said, you know, you, you've got to put in place a methodology for coaching that has a couple of things. First of all, you need to train the managers on how to coach. It isn't high school football. <laughs> right, yeah, no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. So don't be assuming just because these are really smart folks that they know the skills of coaching. So when we develop um, uh, the training modules, we develop not only stuff for the reps, but, but we develop specific modules on best practices for coaching. So that's step one. Yeah, step and by two. the way, and by the way, Richard, yeah. just on that one, I think anyone listening, it's almost, it's almost more dangerous to tell people to go off and start coaching who don't know how to coach than it is to not have them coach. Oh no, you can, <laughs> yeah, you can make some serious mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can make well, and 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 if you don't believe that, I mean, just look at turnover and and do some post interviews of why reps 
leave companies. Mm -hmm. and, and usually there are some, some uh, very good examples of that. So no, don't be, and, ju and just because the, the manager was a, just a top flight rep, and that's usually where people mm -hmm. tend to gravitate to get their managers, the assumption that a top flight rep will automatically know how to coach when he's declared a manager is just foolhardy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's not clear thinking. So, so yes, the, the first clear step, you know, we believe was you got to get serious about having uh, the managers go through some intense experiences. For example, we also build in uh, a, a 180 assessment to get managers to get feedback from their people, mm -hmm. like, how are you doing, Sally? And so we, we deal we deal with the with the skill development and we deal with the attitudinal part of giving the managers real feedback on, so you think you're a pretty good coach? Why don't you listen to your 12 reps and see what they think? Mm -hmm. uh, because oftentimes it can be insightful. And, and the other thing I think the key, the key to it, John, in making it happen is not only the skill issue, but the time issue. So what we've done is say that, that coaching in the field is great, but the problem with it is it takes a lot of time. You gotta get on an airplane, go someplace. So we've developed a way to do coaching online. You know, there are a tremendous number of learning management systems now that are really, really good. I mean, it's not like the old days where they were so hard you couldn't figure them out. No, I know. I, I built a few in my time. So yeah, <laughs> but they work today. They work today. So uh, today, so, today they're so simple. Oh, uh, they're great. They're absolutely great. We use uh, one called Rehearsal, but, but there are like 50 others that, that are, are available. But the point of all that is to say, you have to augment your your field based uh, based coaching with some online process so let's say the manager determines the rep needs uh, some additional uh, uh, skill development in, in handling objections well great you know determine that have the, the the rep you know make some videos about handling a, a key objection submit it on a video to the manager the manager watches the video and then gives feedback to the reps via video mm -hmm. on what the, on what was good and what was not so good about that practice point. Well, you can get a heck of a lot of, of practice and feedback in if you do it online versus jumping on airplanes and flying halfway across the country. Yeah. Now, it doesn't replace field-based coaching, but the point is to augment. So those are those are the two things that I would say that if, if a company said, you know, Dick, what the dickens would you do to make coaching better? I would really get serious about training the managers to coach rather than assuming that they're good at it. And I, I would build in 180 and 360 kinds of assessments. And I would find ways to augment by using the technology that is now user friendly. Th those are key points. Yeah. And I think the other part to, to Dick is that um, a lot of training in the past has always been set up uh, assuming that all selling is done face to face, right? As it used to be. But the reality is that that's not the case anymore. A lot of selling is done online via Zoom and what we're using today. And, uh, and it's not because, and, it's, and it used to be at the very beginning, it was, a, it was kind of a convenient thing for salespeople, you know, to some degree, because you didn't have to travel, you could save some money. But now it's a customer preference in a lot of ways where customer, we've had instances where the customer has said, uh, we, you're down the road, we'll come see you. And they said, no, no, it's fine. Let's just do it over Zoom. So I think using technology to coach is a good idea because a lot of salespeople are now using technology to sell and a lot of sales training isn't really adapted to that yet. I, I, I don't think there's any question about that, John. And just think about it. if that's true in 2019, what's it going to be like 10 years from now? Right. I mean, first of all, the technology to do what we're doing right today will be twice as good. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. And, and I think, you know, initially we got some pushback on like, well, you know, my managers don't like that, that, that software stuff, you know, they're kind of old school. And, and I said, well, f first of all, let's give it a shot because maybe they're not quite as old school as you think they are. And we haven't had any trouble with it at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's because a lot of people had bad experiences with some of the early systems, which were like, we, we actually tried one and we had trouble with it too. It was just too complex. And so can you make a mistake? Yeah, so if you're gonna do this, do a good search of the learning management systems and get one 
that does what you want it to do versus one that simply has all the bells and whistles, 90% of which you're not going to use. Yeah. And I think the other thing too, Dick, is you obviously have to take your cues from customers too, right? From buyers. Um, because if a, if a buyer wants to engage with you in a particular way and you try to force them to engage with you in another way, like somebody, I talked to somebody recently, who gave me a fantastic example. He said he was sitting in the car with this, with the sales guy that he, he'd been coaching them or whatever. And the cust and the, and the prospect texted the guy, um, just a quick question. Right. And immediately the sales guy called the customer, right. Or the prospect prospect didn't want to call prospect had texted him and wanted a text back right but he tried to force him into a he called immediately and it's like that that misalignment and it's like the same the same with what we're just talking about sometimes you got to take your cues from the prospects and figure out how they want to be communicated with well yeah and you know and, and you know to your point you know it, it does sort of make sense if you believe that and i truly do then then using some of those methodologies in the training ain't an all bad idea. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think the third thing that, that we, we did was we actually, which is the stuff that took us the most time, is we actually have spent about two years taking all of our um, basic skill modules and putting them on video. Mm. Uh, you know, so all the stuff, everything from business acumen to fundamental objection handling stuff, uh, so that means that the sales rep can now, if the manager says to the sales rep, hey, you know, you need to get a little bit of asking questions, we have a module on asking questions, they can turn on their iPhone 10 minutes and take a look at best practices for that. And we have 38 of these things. And so the beauty of that is that, is that every manager, and I think this, this point is important, John, that every manager can individualize the training to their reps. Mm -hmm. Think about the old days, we used to customize the program, oh, yeah, yeah. But, but all 300 reps went through <laughs> the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was customized to the company and not to It was the customized company. to the company, mm -hmm. that's right. And people, where, whereas, and when we stop to think about it, you have to be able to customize it to the individual. And the only way we can figure out how to do that is to put the stuff on on video yeah. and, and that means that manager a can say to a given uh, rep here are the three things you need to learn and they can pick three other skill sets mm -hmm. that the, the rep next door needs to learn and they're all on their iphone yeah. that i think is a substantial difference in delivery yeah no i think that's huge um, dick because at the end of the day you know especially for especially for um you know experienced reps i mean it's it's tough if you put them through a a standard program yeah maybe it's customized to the to the company but they have to go through stuff that they're already really good at and maybe they have to you know go through half of it before they get to bits that are actually useful for them but the the way you're you're outlining to be able to give people specifically like surgical targeted bits of training um that address their specific needs you're going to get much better adoption for that too right? i it's it's a big deal because you know particularly in today's market you know with how complex the selling process is you have differences of skill sets from you know very you know young people that are in their mm -hmm. 20s to older folks that are they're in their 50s you have different generations which are which are used to learning in, in different ways and to say well we're going to put you all through that program in phoenix arizona do some powerpoints boy that's a hard sell yeah 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 exactly so so we think you know i think the three things of, of the thing about thinking about it as a, as a continuous process versus stuff in an event the idea that stop kidding yourself the, the coaching is a must do is the second and the third is the training's got to be available anytime, any place, and it has to be customized to the individual. That I think is a substantially different set of ideas. Yeah, no, it is, and I love that idea of it being on the smartphone because I think um, because one of the things that I we always bump up against all the time is this idea of people think they're so busy, right? Oh, we're busier than we've ever been. And I'm like, eh, are we though? Um, is it more that we're more distracted than we've ever been? But the reality is that we've become so um, reliant on these things that 
producing your short videos targeted at my training available on my smartphone it's a higher probability i'm going to access that when i'm sitting in an airport or at lunchtime or whatever it is than it than if i have to if it's something more complex that i have to access well we, we had a great example of that one one of our clients called us the other day the other advantage of that is it's also real time you know he, the guy was was telling us one of his reps was about to make a call and 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 said you know he knew the call was going to have a lot of objections so he just he just had his, he just sat in his car and the module is 10 minutes long so he sat and, and listened again to the module before the call so you can literally go back over the content mm -hmm. and, and given that there it's all been which took quite a lot of time it condensed down to a 10 minute thing you can you can do the learning exactly when you need it uh, and again pretty important uh, uh, because we live in a busy world yeah at the point of impact yeah i mean that's uh, that's fantastic i mean to be able to do that to sit in your car for 10 minutes before the meeting and you know get uh, get up to speed on on objections or whatever it is that you think is going to come up is fantastic listen we're bumping up against the end of our time uh, dick so level5selling.com is the is the website is there anything else you want to tell people about level5 well, i think we've done a pretty good job in in, uh, in looking go to go to our website uh, we have lots of stuff on there um, we have we have a, written a lot of articles, you know, close to 200 articles, you know, and those those you can get free by going to, uh, uh, well, the easiest way to get that is just go to my LinkedIn site, Richard Roof on LinkedIn, and there's a whole bunch of articles. They're free. You know, you can download those. Those constitute the sort of core material around which we built the modules. So that's that's all you can have for uh, yeah. And I love the, you've also got merchandise. That's the first. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Merchandise is always good. Merchandise is always good. And I see you've got all profits go to prevent child abuse in America. Okay, that's fantastic. So there you go. You can get skills. You can get a cool t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, whatever. And it all goes to a good cause. So on the one hand, the training goes towards helping you make more money when you're selling. And if you buy some merchandise, it goes to help uh, prevent child abuse. There you go. Perfect. Great combination. John, I uh, just thank your audience and John, thank you again for giving me an opportunity to, uh, to chat with your audience. Yeah, absolutely. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Pretty good.